it is my honor to welcome you to the amazing world of trauma and orthopedics. I am George Ampat and I work as a consultant orthopedic surgeon at Liverpool University Hospital Foundation Trust. This short video attempts to capture the different facets of a career in trauma and orthopedics. I am grateful to the seven other consultant orthopedic surgeons who have contributed their time and effort to make this video. They are Miss Samantha Tross, Mr. Graham Chung, Mr. Lyndon Mason, Mr. Osman Thomas, Mr. Simon Robinson, Miss Shreya Srinivas and Miss Helen Stevenson. We will go through seven questions and each one of us will address a different question. This video will also provide snippets of information that form part of the everyday workload of a consultant orthopedic surgeon. The bread and butter of orthopedic surgery is trauma. Trauma can vary from a high speed road traffic accident to a simple fall at home. This x-ray of the pelvis shows an extra capsular fracture of the neck of the femur. The metallic implant used to fix this is a dynamic hip screw. The post-operative x-ray shows that the fracture is reduced and held in place with internal fixation. Orthopedic surgeons work along with a variety of other clinical staff including nurses, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, pharmacists and clinicians from other specialities. The success that we are able to deliver is only because of the joint team effort. Miss Samantha Tross, consultant orthopedic surgeon from Ealing Hospital London will answer question number one. Good morning. My name is Samantha Tross and I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon. I specialize in hip and knee surgery and I'm currently the lead surgeon at Ealing Hospital, which is part of London Northwest University Hospital's NHS Trust. I've been asked the following questions. Why did I choose this specialty and did I consider any other specialties prior to making my choice? Well, I chose orthopedics for a number of reasons. I, I like the fact that the specialty allowed me to treat both men and women, adults and children. It's a specialty that is varied. There are numerous subspecialties. As I mentioned, I'm a hip and knee surgeon and you can specialize in, in, in that or uh, you can be a hand surgeon, a shoulder surgeon, foot and ankle surgeon. You can specialize in pediatric orthopedics or spinal surgery. And really there's something there for everyone. Unless working in a trauma center, um, most patients uh, are relatively well with an injured body part. And that means it allows them to get better quickly and, and go home. And I realized quite early that I was someone that didn't like chronicity of disease. And I think this is important. You've got to know yourself and know what your likes and dislikes are so you can choose the appropriate specialty. And when you do that, you'll find that uh, you'll be very passionate about what you do and it won't seem like work. Um, now, another aspect of orthopedics that I really liked is the fact that, again, unless you're working in a trauma center, most orthopedic surgery is done in daylight hours. And as a woman uh, who has to consider uh, family obligations, uh, that was an important consideration. Uh, the first female surgeon that I ever saw was an orthopedic surgeon. And of course, that was a significantly uh, impactful moment. Uh, as was the fact that the orthopedic surgeons were really the friendliest and most supportive surgeons uh, of all the specialties that I rotated through. And I had the opportunity to rotate, to rotate through general surgery, orthopedics, neurosurgery, vascular surgery, and plastic surgery. And so knowing the impact that I can have on students on making their career choice means that I take great care when looking after my students. I did consider orthopedics, uh, sorry, obstetrics and gynecology, um, but uh, babies can come at any time. And I did mention previously that that family time was very important to me. Also, of course, you're restricted to treating predominantly women. 
I also enjoyed a general surgery, but again, general surgical patients can become unwell at any time. And so for the reasons outlined previously, orthopedics was the choice for me. And I have to say, I've had absolutely no regrets. It's a wonderful specialty, and uh, I encourage more of you to choose it. Thank you. Mr. Graham Chung, consultant orthopedic surgeon from Liverpool University Hospital Foundation Trust, will answer question number two. Hi, uh, my name is Graham Chung. I'm a consultant uh, trauma and orthopedic surgeon at Liverpool University Foundation Trust. Uh, I have a, a subspecialist interest in hand and wrist surgery. Um, and I've been asked to answer the question, what is your biggest reward uh, that you get from your job? There are so many aspects which are uh, rewarding, uh, predominantly that it's uh, both fun and satisfying. Now, it's fun because uh, I get to work with uh, a great team, uh, particularly which uh, you need in hand surgery. I have great colleagues, um, consultants, uh, colleagues, trainees, uh, nurses, uh, therapists, uh, administrative staff, all which help me do my job and we have a great time uh, in doing it. And I think it's very important, whatever you choose uh, as, a, as a career, that you do something uh, that you enjoy. Uh, let's face it, if you're going to be walking for the next uh, 40 years doing something, it'll be considerably less miserable if, if you can enjoy it. Uh, the other aspect that uh, is so uh, great about my job is that it's very satisfying. Um, two aspects of uh, are satisfying, uh, particularly the surgeon's uh, surgery and uh, the uh, patient's results. So the surgery, I have a great uh, variety. Um, if a nerve is squashed, uh, I will decompress it. Uh, if a bone is uh, broken, I can replace it or, or fix it. If a uh, joint is worn out, I can replace it or uh, fuse it. Uh, if somebody cuts uh, or snaps their ligament or tendon, I can repair it uh, or reconstruct it. And the other uh, satisfying uh, aspect are the results. Uh, my patients, by and large, uh, tend to be uh, happy. Um, you can't help absolutely everybody, but we help the large majority of people, uh, not just with operations, sometimes we use splints, advice, uh, injections uh, and therapy. So. Uh, Orthopaedics in particular has, has a great uh, wide variety of uh, aspects which is hugely rewarding and I would uh, recommend it uh, to anybody who wants to have a go. We heard about total joint replacements for severe arthritis. Here the damaged ends of the joints are removed and replaced with artificial implants. These implants can be made from metals, ceramics, ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene or a variety of other materials. This x-ray of the knee shows complete loss of cartilage with bone rubbing on bone which can cause severe pain. These bone models demonstrate early arthritis, advanced arthritis and a total knee replacement in situ. This is the post-operative x-ray following a left total knee replacement. The care of the patient does not end with surgery. Post-operative management and aiding to return to normal function is crucial. Orthopedic surgeons contribute to national joint registries and patient reported outcome measures. This allows us to constantly monitor our work and provide a high quality of service as standard. Mr. Lyndon Mason, consultant orthopedic surgeon from Liverpool University Hospital Foundation Trust will answer question number three. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lyndon Mason. I am a trauma orthopedic surgeon with my subspecialty interest of foot and ankle and major trauma. I also work with the university uh, as the musculoskeletal uh, system lead and orthopedic specialist lead. Uh, the question I was posed is what uh, do people find tough uh, about uh, working in the specialty of trauma and orthopedics? Uh, I've racked my brain about this because there's not a lot 
that is specific about orthopedics that is not um, specific about other specialties really. But I think what people find most difficult initially is that you uh, learn a trade, uh, go into medical school and learn all about medicine and orthopedics really sits outside of this. So uh, it's a specialty in its own that is a lot of engineering uh, related uh, to it. Uh, when we're talking about uh, bone healing, often the fixation of bones uh, requires a knowledge of engineering and a knowledge of physics and maths uh, for you to work out uh, how you're going to fix bones, for, uh, for example. And the use of implants as well, which is different to the... Uh, pharmaceutical companies that uh, uh, most people be, be used to in uh, medicine. Um, in regards to hours, the, uh, there's um, a lot of hours to be done within the uh, training, but no different to other specialties, I don't think. And certainly when you get to consultant level, um, it's uh, as with any other consultant job. Uh, it can be uh, hyper competitive. Um, uh, as compared to other medicine and surgical specialties. So we tend to find that uh, most trainees uh, would require to have other interests outside of uh, the normal uh, working life uh, to complete such as uh, research and educational or managerial uh, activities to allow their uh, CV to compete with others. We also find that with our surgical specialty, uh, you get an immediate feedback. So um, as would, as would with plastic surgery, uh, the job that you've done is immediately represented on a radiograph. So you have the automatic feedback that you've done a good job. Obviously, it doesn't always stay in that great position that you left it. Uh, but, uh, the results also in, uh, improving patients' mobility, allowing them to be pain free and allowing them to mobilize and uh, function, uh, gives you a, 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 a huge amount of uh, um, uh, personal feeling of uh, achievement. Um, I hope this helps. Bye. Mr. Osman Thomas, consultant orthopedic surgeon from Wolverhampton, will answer question number four. I am Osman Thomas, consultant orthopedic surgeon in Wolverhampton. My interests are trauma and orthopedics and foot and ankle surgery. I'm also a senior academic tutor for Birmingham Medical School and I sit on the question writing panel for the Royal College of Surgeons writing MCQ questions for the exit exam of the Royal College of Surgeons. The question I've been asked to answer is for people wishing to pursue a career in trauma and orthopedics. What are the qualities and skills required for them to excel? Well, I'd say there's no single formula. Most orthopedic surgeons are not exceptional in terms of academic achievement or manual dexterity. In general, I think the principles required for being an orthopedic surgeon is an appreciation of mechanical principles and restoration of function. We often like to have measurable outcomes. A combination of soft skills and harder traits are required to be a successful orthopedic surgeon. And amongst the softer skills, I would say communication skills are perhaps the most appropriate. You need to be approachable both for patients and colleagues. You need to be able to empathize with patients. You need to be an active listener. Also, I think is important is an appetite and the desire to pursue the specialty. One needs to work hard, and I have not myself found a trainee, trainee who has been particularly conscious of when they finish their shift to being a good trainee. I often find that if you're enthusiastic about the profession, you are prepared to go the extra mile, and I think that's terribly important. It's true in sports, it's true in business, that you need to really work hard to hone your skills. Effective time management, again, is another important principle for, for two things, clinical responsibilities and to develop recreational attributes which relaxes you when you're not pursuing orthopedics per se. 
reasonable manual dexterity and, and academic achievement. The particular things I think the training program hopes to develop, we need to hone people's knowledge and it needs to be wide and deep. Orthopedics covers the whole an anatomy of the musculoskeletal system, it covers a range of pathology, tumors, infections, degenerative conditions, trauma, etc. It also covers a wide range from pediatrics to the elderly. That wide, deep base of knowledge allows one to be flexible with effect effective decision making and it allows critical appraisal of information. Orthopedics is changing, like all surgical specialties, fairly rapidly. One needs to have a sense of intellectual curiosity to stay, to stay current. We've really moved on from just asking for a bigger hammer to robotic surgery, biological treatments, and that, that sense of intellectual curiosity is terribly important to progress for the future. The other point I'd, I'd, I'd like to make is that one needs to learn from mistakes. No one gets it right all the time. And throughout a career, if you're going to be successful and to progress, I think you need to reflect on mistakes and learn from them such that we, we, don't, we don't stagnate. Those are my, are my thoughts. They're, they're certainly... Not the, not the product of peer-reviewed assessment, but they're my observations over a 25-year career. Thank you. This young lady has sustained a knee injury whilst cycling. Some of our work involves using the arthroscope. This enables us to visualize the joint and perform the necessary intervention with minimal access. A lot of sports injuries are addressed in this way. Mr. Simon Robinson, consultant orthopedic surgeon from Viral University Hospital Foundation Trust, will answer question number five. Hello, I'm uh, Simon Robinson, an upper limb uh, orthopedic consultant uh, based on the Wirral near Liverpool. I've been asked to uh, answer how does this speciality impinge on your life outside medicine and how does this change as your career progresses? I'm currently on uh, holiday, so life isn't impinged too much and I apologise about the casual uh, dress. Trauma orthopaedics is uh, similar to a lot of other surgical specialties where we start our uh, foundation training and core surgical training where we need to achieve certain targets to be able to progress um, with our uh, chosen career. Certainly audit and research on top of your general day-to-day -day work, learning how to operate and learning your anatomy uh, is important as you uh, start in your career. Your ST years are uh, certainly deemed a six year job interview. You need to work hard and learn how to operate and have to again achieve certain targets to pass your final ARCP. Some jobs are busier than others but certainly uh, all rotations involve a significant amount of commuting which uh, does take time out of your day-to-day uh, -day life. This can be uh, tiring, especially when you're uh, on nights. Within your uh, ST training, you will uh, uh, embrace at some point what we call a Braithwaite Triad. This uh, is named after one of our uh, pastor TPDs in the Mersey region, which involves a certain time of your life where you often choose to uh, get married, start a family, but also sit your FRCS exam. And this is certainly the most uh, stressful and difficult um, time during your surgical career. After completing your ST training, you move on to a fellowship for a year or two, which is pretty mandatory in orthopedics. This can involve some upheaval as it's better to move to a different deanery or different country for this to gain uh, experience of orthopedics outside of the bubble which is your deanery. You also begin to uh, get stressed about uh, gaining a consultant job and certainly if there's two medical professionals within your family then getting a, a job for both of you at a hospital or hospitals that are close by can be uh, a challenge. Certainly now rest days and nights are more frequent than they used to be but to uh, achieve a safe or 
outstanding consultant practice, you probably do need to come in and gain as, as, as much uh, experience in theatre as you can. And again, this can impact on life outside of work. Certainly, as you become uh, more senior and then gain the, the uh, consultant job, then uh, there is sort of light at the end of the tunnel. And the main person to ask uh, about this uh, would be my wife. And she uh, said to me that in the orthopaedic training in general, that there's, uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And certainly when you get a consultant job, you have a fixed rotor, you know your weekends. And in most hospitals, unless you're in a major trauma center, operating in the middle of the night is rare. And this certainly makes life outside of work easier to plan and childcare and other day-to-day -day issues a lot easier. Different people are uh, affected differently uh, by the training and the work involved. And I think orthopedics is uh, progressing maybe a little slower than other specialties in terms of offering uh, less than full-time training. That's certainly more common than it used to be and um, part-time or less than full-time jobs to accommodate family life or uh, health matters or just personal preference. I have mentioned uh, a lot of difficulties with trauma and orthopedic training and it's certainly not an easy option um, but there probably aren't many jobs in this uh, world that don't impinge on your life outside of work in some way or another. If I had the opportunity I'd definitely choose this choice again and uh, I certainly do think that the, the consultant job although not easy and is often very busy, is uh, easier than your uh, years of training. Um, and it's certainly a busy, fulfilling and uh, rewarding career choice. Thank you. Ms. Shriya Srinivas, consultant orthopedic surgeon from Sheffield, will answer question number six. Hello. My name is Shreya Srinivas and I'm an orthopedic spinal surgeon practicing in Sheffield. I've been asked to answer the question as to what major changes are anticipated in my speciality, how this would affect my job role and how it would impact on the competitiveness or the career pathway for somebody considering a future in orthopedic surgery. The fact I introduced myself as an orthopedic spinal surgeon is an indication that the future is in subspecialty training and specialized care being the norm in specialist centers. This would mean that in addition to general orthopedic training, you would be expected to undergo fellowship training. For example, my chosen specialty of spines comes under the purview of both neurosurgery and orthopedics. But in future, a speciality interface fellowship incorporating the skills offered by both these programs would be necessary to train a specialist spine surgeon. Plastic surgery and orthopedics already provide the skills through a speciality interface fellowship to train specialist hand surgeons. This then means that the breadth of specialities offered within orthopedic surgery would increase and it would attract trainees from a varied background with varied interests. Orthopedics also supports less than full-time training and there are now mentorship programs to help support people who want to consider part-time training either for the reasons of research, teaching, academia or for family purposes. All of this means that traditional teaching and training methods are being challenged. Orthopedics, however, is very good at embracing technology and innovation to improve the skills and adapt to the changing times. This would mean that it would be a very exciting time to consider a future in orthopedic surgery as there will be changes in providing training and also in specialist care to prepare surgeons for the future. Thank you. Back kick is the single largest cause of disability in the world. A slip disc or a disc prolapse occurs when the jelly-like contents of the disc leak out and press on the nerves that travel through the spinal canal. Leg pain in addition to back pain is termed sciatica. This MRI scan shows a large disc prolapse. Surgical intervention 
involves entering the spinal canal and removing the part of the disc that is pressing on the nerve. Miss Helen Stevenson, consultant orthopedic surgeon from Liverpool University Foundation Trust, will answer question number seven. Hi there. My name is Helen Stevenson and I work at Liverpool University Foundation Trust's major trauma centre and uh, I'm an orthopaedic consultant specialising mainly in upper limb and scapular fractures and I also do general orthopaedics and major trauma on calls. My question to answer for you all is what should a medical student be doing now to prepare themselves for starting out in this speciality? I would say first and foremost it's a very interesting speciality. You are and will be in the hospital for the majority of your clinical activities and you will have a very busy life. It doesn't mean you can't have a good home work balance. I have four children and it will always be very interesting though. So I've put together some po pointers for you. Um, I would say that I always did want to do surgery since before I became a medical student. So I would say number one in my pointer list is relax. You have plenty of time. It's a long five years at medical students, but they will be the most fun five years of your life. Um, the one thing I would say, point number two, is it's very important to always attend your anatomy lectures. They will be the questions that will come up time and time again in your exams from medical student right up to when you sit your FRCS final exit exams. The anatomy will always be there. Um, number three, clinical attachments. When you get to your clinical attachments, make sure you introduce yourself to your consultant and make sure that you tell them that you want to study surgery. And at every opportunity, be involved. Ask if you can do things, ask if you can run little audit projects, come to clinic with them, go to theatre with them and get the most out of your attachments. Then number four is always get into theatre as often as possible and get scrubbed. No one will invite you to get scrubbed, you need to ask. But asking, people are always delighted when medical students ask whether they can get scrubbed. Not only because it's helpful to us, you can hold the retractors, but it's also, it's good, we can teach you better when we're scrubbed, relaxed doing the operations. So always make sure that you ask. Um, in your clinical attachments, point number five, don't always stick to the programme. Think ahead. Um, make sure you attend clinics, attend the MDTs, which are the multidisciplinary team meetings. And these are invaluable because they're how the way that things are moving forward now. Everything is discussed in MDTs, especially for cancers, for major trauma patients. So getting involved in the MDT and know how they're running as a medical student will be invaluable to yourselves. I would also say that theatres, again, is the most important. Make sure you go there, find out when your consultant's going, find out when the registrar and the SHOs are going and make sure that you're there and asked to do things, asked to be taught to stitch. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're not allowed to do it on the actual patient, but there's plenty of times we can teach you how to stitch using different equipment that we have in theatre. So then, Think early about your house jobs. You'll do lots of different clinical attachments in various um, surgical settings. So think about where you would like to work, where you know that you've been a medical student, where you've been allowed to do lots of things. So I would suggest that you start early thinking about where you want to, uh, where you want to do your house jobs. And I think it's also a really good idea that you try and work for someone that you've met as a medical student and that does remember you. You will also have time. My uh, my next pointer would be that in fifth year, become a SAMP student in trauma and orthopaedics and get to really know a clinical team at that setting and see if you can arrange that that is where you're going to do your house jobs. I think that will uh, that will be a really good step forward because that means they know you already and you can jump straight in there. When you're doing your house jobs, once you've done all the ward related jobs and you're the ones then, there is no reason as a house officer. I used to go to theatre all the time and the same as a medical student. I used to go to, I used to join a firm and I would just follow them. Um, I'd go to theatre, I'd learn how to stitch, I'd do little research projects and audits for them and it certainly set me in good stead then for the career that I've chosen in the long term. Okay, and good luck. Bye.
we hope we have been able to provide you with a flavor of the amazing world of trauma and orthopedics. I wish to once again thank all my other fellow orthopedic surgeons who contributed to making this video. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to ask any orthopedic surgeon. We are a fun-loving group of surgeons and want to welcome you into our fold. Please try to link up with your local trauma and orthopedic student society. Details of all the regional student societies are available on the website of the British Orthopedic Association. Thank you.